In my last video, I created the Statement of Changes in Equity. We use the information from the bottom of the Statement of Changes in Equity to complete the Equity section in the Statement of Financial Position. We're now going to produce the Statement of Financial Position in good form. Note that the Statement of Financial Position is pretty long, so I'm never going to be able to show you the Statement of Financial Position in just one screen. All right, we're going to start, of course, with the name of the company, then the name of the statement, and finally, the date. This is the only statement where the date is never, ever, ever year ended. Instead, you use the word as at and then the date, at and then the date, or just the date. I'm going to use as at. We know the accounting equation says assets equals liability plus equity. Assets come first in the basic accounting equation, so they come first on the statement of financial position. Assets are divided into subcategories. We're going to use those subcategories when we create the financial statements. Current assets. If you look at your listing, you already know which accounts are current assets, but current assets cannot be in random order. They have to go in order of liquidity, meaning list the items that will be converted into cash fastest, and then list the items that will be used or consumed. So the first thing we list is cash. 14,430. I'm then going to list trading investments because trading investments can be converted into cash very quickly. 18,305. Finally, accounts receivable, which will be converted into cash. 28,586. Finally, inventory, because inventory will be sold and converted into cash. 149,969. We're now going to list all the other assets that are used or consumed. The order of the assets which are used and consumed do not matter. I've got two, prepaid insurance and supplies. I could put prepaid insurance first or supplies first. It would not matter. I'm going to do prepaid insurance. 5,866 and then supplies. 6,162. We then have a subtotal, total current assets. Notice I put it in a different column. You actually don't have to do that. I'm just doing it. We now move on to non-current assets, but non-current assets are divided into five subcategories. The first subcategory is long-term investments, but we don't have any long-term investments, so we can ignore that and set it aside. Following long-term investments is property, plant, and equipment, and we definitely have some of those. I put the heading property, plant, and equipment. I then start with the property, plant, and equipment that will last the longest and is not depreciated, which is land. 160,865. I then move on to building. There is two ways that I could show buildings. I'm going to show you the first way. 319,710. I then deduct the accumulated depreciation from the building, which would be negative 151,874 because accumulated depreciation shows the amount of the building that I have already used or consumed in the past. The difference between these two numbers is called the carrying value, and the carrying value in this case is 167,836. Let's do equipment. Equipment was 135,524. The accumulated depreciation that related to this equipment was negative 54,228. The carrying value of the equipment was 81,296. This is one of the ways that you could show the building and equipment. So notice when we look at the listing of property, plant and equipment, it starts with the items that will last the longest, generate revenue for the longest period of time, which is land. Buildings would be next. You could use a building for, you know, 40, 100 years. Equipment is unlikely to last as long, so it's listed next. So that's one important thing, the order of property, plant, and equipment. This is one way that I could show property, plant, and equipment, but I could also do something different. I could decide to show the building as a net number, indicating that I've already taken away the accumulated depreciation. This would simply be listed as 167,836. I would have to create a note to the financial statements in order to show how I calculated the building net, but I don't have to show the accumulated depreciation. I could do the same for equipment. 
81,296. Note that I'm not even showing the accumulated depreciation, but I am including the word net. I'm going to leave it like this, and that's going to provide me with the subtotal of total property, plant, and equipment. 365,997. Our additional subcategories after this was intangible assets, we don't have any, goodwill, have none, other assets, the catch-all category, and we don't have that either. So at this point we have to put in total assets. The total assets are the total of all the subcategories added together, and in this case it is $589,315. So we've just completed the asset side of the Statement of Financial Position. In the next video, we're going to do the liabilities and equity sides.